This class is on HIV and AIDS, some current data on HIV and AIDS, and how um, AIDS patients and HIV patients can respond to exercise. So a little bit of the history of HIV AIDS, as many of you know, this was originally first described in the early 1980s. People didn't know what it was. And although the HIV virus itself has been known since the 1950s, uh, most people during that time, if you watch any documentaries, there's a really great movie um, by the group called ACT UP, and it was called How to Survive a Plague. So if you're really interested on a, a really good documentary about the history of AIDS and, and some of the activism that took place, I recommend that. You can probably get it on something like Netflix. I don't know if it would be on Redbox, but it's called How to Survive a Plague. And so originally they believe it was a virus um, from Africa, originally in chimps, that mutated and when blood was in contact um, with humans. HIV now is more of a chronic illness and many people can live 10 years or longer before developing AIDS. And, and so there, it's due to the antiretroviral therapy or highly active antiretroviral therapy or heart and there are 40 million people worldwide living with AIDS. So what's the difference between, you know, what is AIDS? First of all, the person has to have the HIV virus. They have to have their lymphocyte count. There was a specific type of T cells called CD4 lymphocytes. So they've got to have a very low cell count of these lymphocytes, less than 200 cells per microliter or less than 14% of total lymphocytes. And then they also have to have other AIDS defining illnesses which tend to be opportunistic infections. So lung diseases, Kaposi sarcoma, which is like, it looks like a type of skin cancer, severe uh, cachexia, muscle wasting as well. So let's look at some data on how HIV uh, statistics in urban and non-urban areas Surprisingly, HIV and AIDS is really increasing in non-urban areas, as we'll see in the coming slide. So just looking at the numbers here, so the larger areas, greater than 500,000, uh, those are your large cities. The medium-sized cities, which of course Rock Hill would fall into that with a population of about, you know, 65,000. And then we've got more rural areas. So you get into other areas of the county, and throughout the state. So interestingly with this slide, when you start to look at the diagnoses of age among adults, so again, this is at adults and adolescents, when you look in large cities, you can see that most of the infection is due to, is in African Americans, whether it's large cities, but uh, small cities and non-metropolitan areas. They're going to, interestingly, if you look at the non-metropolitan -metro rural areas, you can see that Caucasians make up a pretty large percent of infections in more rural areas. And other groups, a little bit smaller percentages based on that, but still primarily almost half of uh, infections are African Americans and the percent of Caucasians increases actually when we go from a large city to a rural area.